Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and I'm back from my holidays, which means a lot of cool game creation content will be regularly coming up on the channel. So in this video, I'll be showing you a couple cool tips and tricks you can use to make cool environments for your games. Note that what I'll be showing you can be applied to any game environment, be that an enchanting forest, volcanic mountains, or dark graveyards. Whether you're making a top-down shooter game or a side-scrolling platformer, this video will also have some handy bits of information for you to make good use of. With that said, let's get started. So, as you can see, I'm walking this little character around a cartoony forest. This scene, however, is limp, lifeless, in short, just not interesting or fun to move around. And having dead, boring environments like this one can really break the player's immersion. He won't feel that urge to go and explore the game world. And so our goal in this video is to add a real life and appeal to this static, meek world. So first of all, we can add more life to the scene by creating some movement. For now, the trees and mushrooms are completely still, which again, is really boring. So I'll select one of my trees and create a simple idle animation for it, rotating it ever so slightly left and right, as if disturbed by a gentle breeze. Since each one of these trees is a prefab, I can simply hit apply here, and all trees will now be moving to and fro. Awesome. The scene already looks and feels a bit better. So tip number one to make an interesting game environment is to get the pieces making up that environment moving. Now of course you don't need to animate rocks, but stuff like trees, flowers, grass or water should move. Just a subtle animation can really make a big difference. Before moving on to more ways to add life to your scenes, I wanted to stress the importance of reusing assets. In other words, don't draw dozens of trees in your 2D application to make a forest scene like this one. Just create one or two trees and then by simply duplicating with Ctrl D and then rotating and scaling those one or two trees in different directions and with slightly different sizes, you can come up with an entire environment a lot faster and the game world will still look fine. You can even change the color of the trees using the sprite renderer component, getting some trees to be a bit darker than others. Especially as an indie game developer who has so much to do to bring an entire game to life, it's really important you get used to using simple little shortcuts like this one to speed up development time. And of course you can do the same with rocks, flowers, tombstones or whatever else you want to add to your scene. Also make sure to turn your various environment pieces into prefabs. This way if you make a change to one tree for example, say the size of its collider, then you can quickly and easily make that change to all other trees in your world. Okay, with that said, let's get back to beautifying this forest. And the way we're going to do that is by adding some more movement to the scene with the use of particle effects. Now, I have a few tutorials on particle effects that I recommend you check out. In this case, I'll just be creating a very subtle effect, like some green snow falling from the sky. Though the player won't pay too much attention to this effect, you'll feel its presence and the movement and life it adds to the scene. The masterpiece Hollow Knight by Team Cherry also uses particle effects to add more depth to the world of Hollow Nest. You'll notice how in each environment there's some cool little effects, subtle, but it's one of those little details that really makes the game that much more pleasing and interesting to look at. So definitely try adding some little particles to your scene, it will make it pop. Next up, lighting and shadows. A few months ago I made a video on how to make 2D lighting for your games using simple soft shapes. No complex shader or script, just create soft white shapes in some 2D application like Photoshop or GIMP and then export those into Unity. You can then lower the opacity of those shapes and easily change their color to add some cool lighting effects to your environment. For example, say I wanted to add add some rays of sunlight streaming in from the top right corner of the screen. I can easily do so by drag and dropping this cone shaped light, lowering its opacity and changing its color to a orangey yellow in the sprite renderer and then simply duplicate it once or twice and rotate those new rays of light. You can also use these soft shapes to get certain parts of your environment glowing. For example, I'll place a circular round shape near these trees, lower its opacity and give the light a green color. Now the trees are more appealing and interesting to look at. Also use these to simulate a glowing fire, torch, lamp or crystals. By the way, this is the lighting technique used in Hollow Knight and Limbo. 
These lights are also used from a gameplay perspective to drive and incite the player to go and explore certain areas of the world. For example, say I really wanted the player to move towards the top left corner of the scene to battle some vicious monster. I can do so by adding a red light near that area. It's a subtle way of guiding the player where you, the developer, would like him to go, which is much better than a big red arrow or little dotted line. Lastly, don't hesitate to use these soft shapes as shadows. In a top-down shooter game, for example, I'll place my soft circle at the foot of all trees, rocks and mushrooms making the shadows a darker green. Now the environment pieces no longer seem to float in midair, things just look a lot better. Note that I also use these soft shapes for my character's drop shadows. Awesome, this far scene is really coming to life now. But there's still a few things we can do to make it extra cool, such as adding little creatures, insects or animals walking or flying around the environment. For example, I'll add to my scene a few red butterflies, some weird frog things and a sleeping teddy bear dude. Adding such characters will be an enormous bonus. It will bring your environment to a whole new level. You can then get those characters moving around the scene with a simple patrol script. Heck, it would be amazing if you got these little characters running away from the player when he gets too near, or maybe growling at him. Just look at how cool this is. The Hollow Knight is running peacefully here, and then scares off a pack of birds. Pure brilliance, the whole world feels so alive and exciting. Now of course, some areas in your game may very well be meant to be lonely, ominous places with no signs of life whatsoever. But in many cases, there's no excuse for not spending one or two hours adding a cool little animal or creature to your scene, just to make it look more alive and pleasing. For example, in a dark cemetery, add some juicy blinking spiders dangling from crooked trees. For an old, dangerous dungeon, create some hairy rats scuttling down corridors. Or on a tropical island, have fun making colourful birds that fly away when the player gets too near. Lastly, to make a great game environment, it's very important that many, if not all of the parts making up your environment, responds to the player or can be interacted with. In other words, when the player bumps into a tree, that tree should move, disturbed by the player's weight. Same for grass, flowers, and mushrooms. Getting those to move a bit when the player collides with them will make everything feel amazing. The player will feel as if he's having a real impact on the environment, that him and his character actually exist within a believable space. And getting environment pieces moving when the player collides with them is so easy. Just add a trigger collider to those pieces, as well as a little script checking when the player collides with them. And when he does, play a move animation using the set trigger function. Note that if you're feeling confused about how to play animations, you can check out my video on the topic. So of course you can spend a lot of time getting the world responding to the player. Like adding puffs of dust by the player's feet when he's walking on an earthy road, bits of grass and leaves when walking in a forest or on some hills, water droplets if walking in a stream, and so on. You can even get the little animals responding to the player, like the birds flying away if the player approaches them, or perhaps little creatures that have eyes that follow you around the scene, or small animals that approach you when you stand idle, but run away from you when you start moving again, like these yellow chicks do in the game Inside. And of course, it's also a great idea to add environment pieces the player can destroy. Again, I'm going to turn back to Hollow Knight, which has a world filled with rocks, vegetation, glass, and crystals the player can destroy with a slash of his sword. This is a very satisfying interaction that will make exploration funner, and again, get the player feeling more part of the world. And that will mark the end of this video on how to make great game environments. Now of course, being able to draw beautiful scenes will definitely help in making epic environments. But even if you can't draw that well, using these tips will still make your scenes a lot of fun to move around and a lot more pleasing to look at. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, then remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's so helpful and appreciated. In this video, we took a look at environments, and if you're interested in learning cool tips to make your player characters a whole lot better, then I recommend you check out this video. With that said, thanks so much for watching. An extra huge thanks to those having helped me out financially over on Patreon. Okay, I'll see you very soon for a lot more game creation content. Cheers!